A PROMISE AND A PLEA TONIGHT FROM THE FAMILY OF TWO GRAND RAPIDS WOMEN SHOT AND KILLED IN THEIR HOME. IT'S BEEN NEARLY THREE YEARS SINCE THE DOUBLE MURDER ON SHELDON AVENUE, YET THEIR SUSPECTED KILLER REMAINS ON THE RUN TONIGHT. BUT TARGET 8 INVESTIGATOR SUSAN SAMPLES TELLS US THAT THE VICTIM'S FAMILY HAS A MESSAGE FOR THE KILLER, THE COMMUNITY AND THE NATION. SUSAN. We continue tonight with our investigation into double murder suspect Darrell Damon Brown, who he is, where he might be. But first, from the victim's family, a plea to the public to be vigilant. Brown could be anywhere. To Brown himself, the family says, You will pay for what you did. They could not have sat here three years ago. Too raw was their grief over losing 47 year old Sherlita Baber Bay, a sweet and gentle soul, and her 25 year old niece, big hearted and bubbly, Kiana Griffin. But on this day, this family fought through it, wanted to see the first airing of the 911 call Kiana made two hours before her brother found her and Sherlita shot dead. 911 it is excruciating, but not talking about the loss, not speaking out, is not an option, says this family, because the man police say murdered Anya Griffin's daughter and sister is still out there walking free three years later. Someone knows something because he had to have help. It's not if he gets caught, but when he gets caught, he can't run forever. He is 48-year-old Darrell Damon Brown, Sherlita Baber Bay's live-in boyfriend. And while no one liked that he did not have a job, the family said they saw no sign he was violent. And some people say he was a little strange, he was a little different, you know. But they said that about my sister, too. She was quiet, you know, she wasn't a social person. So just because you're quiet and you're a little different than everyone else doesn't mean that you're a murderer. What the family did not know, others had witnessed Darrell Brown's violent side, though he hid it well. Totally unassuming, totally mild-mannered. Reverend Robert Dean believes it was a couple years before the murders that he spotted Brown rummaging through his church's dumpster, found out he was homeless, and let him live for several months in Dean's New Life Church of God in Christ, until one of Brown's girlfriends, not Sherlita, paid the pastor a visit. She felt he was very nice, very mannerable, but there was that certain little element she was afraid of. That's when Brown barged into the pastor's office. I said, well, now I was just talking about you. <laughs> and he come, well, I forbid her to talk to males. Oh, no, you're not. I said, now, you sit down. I said, it's my office. Dean said the woman opened her mouth to speak and Brown lunged toward her, prompting Dean to jump up to restrain him and order him to leave the church and never come back. For me, it was like a, almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Court records document Brown's explosive violence toward women. In 2005, another woman, the mother of one of Brown's children, told police he thought she had gotten smart with him, so he tied her up with cords, kicked her in the face, gagged her, urinated on her, and doused her with lighter fluid. She escaped, and later one of the charges dropped because she said she still loved him, knew he needed help, and did not think he would get it in prison. Brown ultimately pleaded guilty to misdemeanor domestic violence. My sister, she loved him. She didn't have, she had never had a boyfriend before. Griffin said while Sherlita loved Brown, he and Kiana, who also lived in the home, did not get along. They weren't fans of each other. And I think she wasn't a fan because, like I said, he wasn't working. And he probably wasn't a fan because he was like, oh, she's exposing me for who I really am. Now, the family wants justice for Kiana and Sherlita and hopes someone will spot Brown and report it to the U.S. Marshals or 911. You know, every day in my purse, I carry Kiana's high school diploma. Because um, that's like her last and greatest accomplishment. There'll be no grandkids, you know. And it's just not fair, you know, that he, um, he's free and he shouldn't be. U.S. Marshals think Darrell Brown fled the state after the murders and may be getting help from relatives. He has family here in Grand Rapids, Wisconsin, Arizona, Ohio, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. If you know anything about where he is, you're asked to call U.S. Marshals, Silent Observer, or 911.